third grade. Today we're going to learn all about a brand new conquistador and his name is Francisco Vasquez de Coronado and we're going to learn all about his explorations in North America. So here's our read aloud for the day. One day in 1536, Don Antonio de Mendoza, viceroy of New Spain, sat in his office in Mexico City listening to fellow Spaniard Alvar Nunez Cabeza de Vaca tell an astonishing tale. So right down here, that's Mendoza. Cabeza de Vaca told Mendoza of his experiences on the disastrous Narvaez expedition. Mendoza was fascinated by this amazing tale of adventure and survival in foreign lands. But the part of the story that interested Mendoza the most was when the report of Cabeza de Vaca gave some news, and very concerning news, about the Golden Cities. While they were living with Native Americans, Cabeza de Vaca had heard much talk about a land to the north of them, a land that was rich in gold. This land was called the Seven Cities of Cabola. It was believed that Cabola was a region to the north containing seven wealthy cities, each one bursting with gold. Mendoza was excited by this report and eager to find gold. Because remember guys, our conquistadors, they were interested in power, fame, and usually gold. Money and gold. So it's not surprising that this conquistador was excited about finding gold. Mendoza decided to find the seven cities of Cabula. He recruited a French priest named Friar Marcos. In addition, a man named Esteban, a slave, who had traveled with Cabeza de Vaca, and who, along with Devaca, survived the Narvaez expedition, was recruited to go along as a guide and translator in their investigative travels north. Esteban was a Moor who had been relocated to Spain as a slave. By the time Mendoza recruited him for the expedition to find seven cities of Kibola, he had become a very experienced explorer. Esteban had come in contact with different Native American groups on his travel and had learned a few things about their way of life. In spring of ni- or 1539, this is 1500s, two men along with a group of Native Americans set off to the north. They walked along trails that had been blazed or previously marked by Indian trackers. Because Esteban knew the land well and traveled at a much faster rate than Friar Marcos, and Friar Marcos wanted to preach Christianity to the Native Americans along the way, the two men decided to split up. Together they came up with a way for Esteban to get messages to Friar Marcos. If Esteban found a good-sized city with some gold, he was supposed to send back a small cross, about the size of your hand. If he found a big city with lots of gold, he was supposed to send back a cross, a very large one, the size of your hand arm. Now, if he found a huge city, a very large amount of gold, he was supposed to send back an even larger cross. After spending a few days scouting the area, Esteban sent Friar Marcos a cross the size of a man, and you can see right there, indicating Esteban either knew or suspected the existence of a large city with great quantities of gold. Friar Marcos was stunned or very surprised as he continued to follow Esteban's path. Friar Marcos followed Esteban's footsteps for several days until messengers brought him disturbing news. The messengers told Friar Marcos that Esteban had been killed in Pueblo by Huica, which was thought to be one of the cities of Kibola. The area known as Huica is in present-day New Mexico. Esteban had presented himself to the Zuni of Huica as a great medicine man and healer. The village elders in the Pueblo were suspicious of Esteban and killed him. When Friar Marcos heard that Esteban had been killed, he decided it wasn't safe to go to Huica because if he were killed, no one would know about their discovery of gold. 
Friar Marcos went back to Mexico with only having seen the town of Huica from a distance. He told the Spanish about their journey and about the large cross Esteban sent back, indicating the existence of large cities with great quantities of gold. The Spanish listened closely. They asked Friar Marcos if he had seen the golden cities of Cabula. Friar Marcos said he had. He told the Spaniards that Hawica was bigger and richer than Tochichlan, the capital of the Aztec Empire. Friar Marcos was so convinced of the truth behind Esteban's message of a large cross that Friar Marcos led the Spanish into believing he had really seen the city. The Spanish heard this, they believed that the city Esteban and Friar Marcos might have seen would be called El Dorado which meant the golden one, which they had heard about from many native people, but had never been able to find. Soon, all the conquistadors in Mexico hoped for a chance to explore and conquer this land of wealth. In the end, Mendoza appointed a young man named Francisco Vasquez de Coronado to lead an expe or expedition to Cibola. In February of 1540, Coronado assembled his expedition in a town of Compostela in northern Mexico. Coronado wore bright, gilded armor. You can see that right there. He recruited 337 Spanish soldiers, 220 of whom rode on horses. Also, on the expedition were 700 Indian slaves who would serve the Spaniards and take care of large herds of sheep and cattle that would be marching with the men. There were also priests and a few women on this expedition. One of the priests was you guessed it, Friar Marcos. Everyone was excited about getting rich from the gold that they would find in Cibola. Coronado and his men marched north through the hot, dry lands of northern Mexico, covering 10 to 15 miles a day. When they came to the river, they built makeshift rafts and used them to ferry themselves and their animals across. They saw some small pueblos, but seeing that the Native Americans had no gold, Coronado and his men pressed on, crossing bush and desert and entering into what is now the United States. Friar Marcos and the Indian guides led Coronado to the Pueblo of Hoica, where Esteban had met his end. As Coronado and his men approached, the Zuni came out to meet them. They were carrying weapons and rocks, and they drew a line on the ground by sprinkling cornmeal as a way of telling the Spaniards they were not to come any farther. They were resolved or determined to protect their town. One of the Spanish priests came forward and began reading a long statement, while an interpreter tried to translate the message to the Zuni. It is said that the Indians were expected to convert or change from their religion to Christianity and to accept the king of Spain as their king. If they didn't agree to do so, then the Spanish would attack them. The Native Americans listened for a while, but then began shooting arrows and tossing stones. Coronado and his men charged. The Zuni men ran back to their pueblos. They fired arrows and threw rocks on the top of their pueblos, built on hills and cliff sides for protection. Coronado was hit by a big rock. Then a second rock struck his helmet and knocked him off his horse. He lay on the ground unconscious, while his men carried on the battle. Coronado's men did, in the end, win the battle. They quickly discovered that Huica was not a vast city on the same scale of Tenticlan. The Zuni lived in Pueblos, multi-story houses made out of stone and plaster. The Zuni people who lived there had no gold, no silver, or no valuable jewels. The conquistadors were furious with Friar Marcos, and some thought he should be put to death for misleading them. What Esteban could have meant by sending back the large cost remains unclear. Regardless, Coronado did not give up hope. He sent men to explore the surrounding area. After all, there was supposed to be seven cities of Cibola. He hoped that the that some of the cities would be more gold than Huica. For the next few weeks, Coronado and his men continued to explore regions of Cibola. They found many Pueblo villages, but no gold. Coronado decided to split his forces up. He sent scouting parties off in several different directions. 
one party traveled northwest, so northwest, through the Hopi Territory in what is now northern Arizona. They went on until they stopped in the tracks in a massive canyon more than a mile deep. I wonder what you guys think that canyon might be. This is the northwest. I went the wrong way. This is the northwest up here. If you can guess what canyon it would be. These men from Coronado Expedition began or became the first known Europeans to see the Grand Canyon, which is now considered to be one of the seven natural wonders of the world. Another party traveled southwest along the Colorado River. So here's a Colorado River right here. Several hundred miles downstream from the Grand Canyon. Today, this section of the river for, forms the border between California and Arizona. A third party headed east from Kibola through New Mexico. They visited the Acoma Pueblo, a pueblo that can still be visited today near present day Albuquerque, New Mexico. The party crossed the Rio Grande, so right up here, a large river that runs south through New Mexico and forms it as a present-day present border between, again, the United States and Mexico. And you can see that right here. Here's a border of Mexico, and here's the United States. So you can see, again, that this river creates like a little border. They passed north through the lands of the 12 Rio Grande Pueblos, an area by the Rio Grande River occupied by Native Americans who the Spanish called Tewesh. Indians. There they observed the Great Plains, where great herds of buffalo roamed or wandered. The Spanish were fascinated by shaggy buffalo. At first, they found it difficult to hunt these animals. In time, however, they learned to hunt the animals with spears, as the Native Americans did. While the Spanish were on the plains admiring the buffalo, one of their native guides told them of a place far to the east called Quivira, a wealthy city. Hearing this, Coronado decided to march east, hoping to find Quivira and the gold he had missed in Quibola. In their search for the seven cities of Quibola, the Spaniards treated the natives they encountered horribly, killing many of them. Coronado and his men crossed into Texas, then onto the Great Plains, where tens of thousands of buffalo grazed around them. During their journey, they met Carachos, nomadic natives of the Great Plains, who lived by following the buffalo herds. These Native Americans of the Great Plains were hunters of buffalo. They used the meat of a buffalo for food, in addition to plants they gathered. They used the skins to make clothing and shoes. They used bones of a buffalo as well as stones to make tools. They burned buffalo dung or manure for fuel. Coronado and his men learned a lot about the Corecho's way of life, including the fact that they had no gold. Coronado and his men decided to move on, making their way through parts of Texas, Oklahoma, and Kansas. Finally, Coronado and his men reached Covira. Instead of a wealthy city, they found a few villages and some grass huts. There was no gra gold whatsoever. He and his men decided to spend the winter near Covira before beginning a long journey back to Mexico. Coronado and his men, who had ridden forth on this expedition so confidently with high hopes of finding gold, had no success in finding wealth. He and his men limped back southward to Mexico with no gold. In fact, Coronado had lost a large sum of money that he invested in the expedition. So I want you guys to have a great night, and we will see you tomorrow. Mm -hmm.